This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Nick Kroll, one of the creative forces be t yes. behind Adult Beginners. Yes. Um, people know you from the league, from Parks and Recreation, mm -hmm. Kroll Show. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to start with sort of a general question, though. Um, this film is kind of coming at an interesting point in your career mm -hmm. in that a lot of things you've done for a long time are coming to an end. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that you wanted to do to try and sort of give people a different taste of you or something you wanted to do to be sort of more creative and controlling what you're doing after, like, you know, the league's wrapping mm -hmm. up, Kroll Show wrapped up, Parks and Rec wrapped up. So it's kind of an interesting time for you in that probably the sky's the limit or the opportunities are much more. Yeah, I mean, the um, th this we started working on this. I brought the idea for the movie to Mark Duplass like three and a half years ago on the set of the league. Um, so it, it takes a long time. I don't think I would have said like three and a half years ago, I'll probably be wrapping up, uh, you know, the league will sure, be finishing sure. up. My sketch show will be finishing up. Uh, parks will be done. Um, it, it really was like, it just felt like, Oh, I want to start the process of doing, new stuff. I want to be able to do some more, maybe more dramatic stuff. I, I want to be able to star in a movie. I want to, uh, try out different, uh, a variety of things. Um, and, and that will remain consistent, I think f for as long as I can see going forward, both being a, like writing, producing, acting, um, doing some dramatic stuff, doing, uh, continuing to do a lot of comedy stuff. Um, the, when you said the sky's the limit, it's it is it's weird when things f finish because there's great fear uh, when something is over um, because there is unknown and for the most part um, uh, there are moments where I've been I don't like that the unknown I've had a very I've known what my year was going to look like for the last sure. like four or five years straight um, and now I don't and that is slightly scary but in the end actually. I think quite exciting. Well, I mean, I, th I think you hit upon something kind of interesting in that, like, yeah, there's a scariness about the unknown, but if you were really to sort of venture away from that fear, you would never venture outside of comedy. Like, and that's one of the things I really liked about the film is I, I and I've always said this before when I've talked to people is that I love to see comedic actors going dramatic mm -hmm. because it's such a different take. And so many people, um, underestimate particularly comedic actors going dramatic as opposed to dramatic actors going comedic yeah i mean obviously not every comedic actor is built to be a dramatic actor or be able to do dramatic work but i would say it's um there's a better shot that a comedic actor could deliver a dramatic performance than necessarily a, a, a drama oh, an totally. actor known for drama will be able to do comedy because there's an intangible to it that said, I mean, when you there are plenty of people who are uniquely gifted at 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 embodying dramatic roles in a way that, but I, but I was always it was always something that was interesting to me and and I and I think trying to make my own movie and was one was like nobody people weren't like clamoring three and a half years ago to make me the star of a movie, uh, let alone a slightly dramatic film, um, but. You know, in especially going to Mark Duplass early on with this, he he was like, "Oh yeah, this idea makes sense, and you absolutely, I know that you'll be able to do this kind of material." And and so it's been, um, it's it's exciting, it's fun. It doesn't mean in any way that I'm like, and now I'm a very serious actor. Sure, sure. Um, but I love, uh, and on Kroll Show, uh, as bananas as the characters were on Kroll Show, there was always a desire to. Um, have them be three dimensional and and weirdly dramatically driven in a in a in a way um, that doing this movie didn't feel like I, I, it was that it was like unbelievably difficult to figure out how to do um, and I feel like having done it and then going back and shooting the third season of Kroll Show there were things I learned doing more dramatically driven work that I think informed the this past season on the show. There's something interesting that you you mentioned and. It, I mean, obviously, it's a peril. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's because of it. But uh, speaking of Mark Duplass, his film has a very sim his films seem to have a very similar sense to me, at least, that they feel like real people. Like, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things I really liked about Adult Beginners mm -hmm. is that it's a bunch of people with flaws, but none of them are like the villain or right. the hero or whatever. Everyone's just like a human being who's a complex, flawed individual. And I think that was really a nice break. How much? Um, 
effort did you try and put into sort of making everyone have that balancing? So it wasn't just like, oh, everyone hates Bobby Cannavale. Right. Like he's an asshole. Right. They all hate him or whatever. Yeah, no, that was a that was a major focus throughout, and it, and and specifically with Bobby as you watch the movie, um, which is in theaters on VOD and iTunes. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, the goal was to make all of them. Specifically, the one I was most worried about was Rose's character uh, plays mm, the you know I, my sister in the movie, and you know you're theoretically following my story. You're gonna you're there's gonna be an arc to the douchebag who learns to like love his family. Sure. Um, hopefully. Um, but with Rose's character as my older sister who takes me back in and has taken care of me in a way her whole life um, and has a child of her own and, you know, like there's a tendency with that character to either make her like a shrew mm-hmm. or a or like Big a dumb. saint, an angel, you know. And and what I what we worked hard on was making her neither, that she is she's a great mother and sister, but also like you know, is like, like lies and skips work and, and is flawed. And, and I think that was the goal was like you're saying is to have, you know, no, everybody is everything and every, so dramatic things have funny moments, funny moments have dramatic things and people are, can be, make a, a, a beautiful, heartfelt, generous decision at the beginning of the day. And by the end of the day, do something terrible. And I think one of the smart decisions you guys had with this production, I mean, is, both Rose and Bobby Cannavale are incredibly talented, both comedically and yeah. dramatically. And so I think it complemented your role as well. So the three of you interacted in such a way that really made them feel like honest relationships. Like, you know, you had your own relationship with Bobby that yeah. was separate from, you know, your relationship with Rose and whatnot. And each of them have their own dynamic. Yes. Uh, thank you for saying that. Um, and I agree. I mean, they're, they're both in getting both of them to do the movie was a, a real coup because of how adept they are at both. Um, and, 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 and within that, as you said, I had my own relationship with Bobby. That was something that I talked with Mark about. And also our, our writers, Liz Flayhive and Jeff Cox, who all of them have a, another sibling. I, I come from four, but like, uh, Liz has a sister, Jeff has a brother, uh, Mark has obviously his brother Jay. And one of the things that we talked about is how alliances sometimes change within, sometimes you're closer to your sister, sometimes you're closer to your brother-in-law, sometimes you and your brother-in-law have an issue, sometimes your sister and your brother-in-law have an issue and they come to you. I mean, oh, it's yeah. like, it's a constantly... Flu- life is very fluid. Yeah. Exactly. And I think we were interested in that shifting version of alliances and, and how much that can happen in, in, in siblings and in-law dynamics. Uh, another thing that you mentioned that kind of makes me think of Mark Duplass because of his speech this year at South by Southwest, mm-hmm. what was your perspective about, you know, releasing it on VOD and iTunes and doing it theatrically as well? Because he seemed to be of the perspective, just get it out there whatever way you can. Yeah. Um, but some people are very rigidly like, we need to get this in the theater. Some, you know, we, we've been doing it. Um, I've been going around the country and doing in theater screenings and Q and A's and, was in New York and Chicago, Boston, LA, uh, Seattle now, Portland, San Francisco, Nashville. Um, and so it's been really fun to watch the movie in a theater and see it with people. And, and I think there's an an enjoyment, especially for a comedy for people to see a movie together in a room. I just think, I think there's, there is something special about the communal experience of watching a film. Um, that said, you know, the movie is, there's a marketplace for this kind of movie, um, and and I hope that I mean look I hope everybody goes to the movie theater and sees this. But the truth is, on some level, I always was designing the movie for my sister and her husband who have four kids can't go out that they'll like get on iTunes or Comcast or gotcha. Amazon or whatever it is and order the movie and watch it at home, um, you know because they can. They can. They don't have to leave. So, um, but I. But I also do think there is something to the theater. I have no rigidity to it. I think the future, though, is, you know, obviously, like unless you're making like I go to the movie theater to see all types of stuff. But, um, but I definitely love the option that people 
aren't going to go to the movie theater to see this, but they want to see it and they'll figure out and how to watch it in their own time. And, and it, it worked. I mean, our opening weekend, we had a really solid like VOD numbers and we had a very, very respectable in theater, you know, per screen average. And it's probably one of those things that the two of them work for each other. The word of mouth from perhaps VOD might benefit the theatrical. I mean, it's one of those things that I guess timing. Yeah. Wise, it depends. I, I think that the reason people still do theatrical and still push for that stuff is because it just increases the, pers- it increases the awareness of it for people to eventually get it on VOD. But uh, the cost is there that it's exactly so advertising. Exactly. Whatnot. But so I, I mean, look, it's always been my dream to have movies that play in big movie theaters and have, you know, huge packed houses over and over, of course, sure. but but also really it's all just eyeballs. Like for me it's all eyeballs and and you know, the idea of people sitting down and watching my movie at home um is awesome and like it's thrilling that idea, you know? In terms of um independent film, what was your perspective? Were you somebody who's always been a huge fan of independent film? I mean obviously being friends with Mark Duplass, like, yeah. he is one of the kings of independent film. Yeah. Um, was that something that you were passionate about before meeting him? Was it something that you grew passionate about being around that kind of stuff a lot? Where, where does that sort um, of factor in? You know, I, I would never really have called myself a cinephile. I mean, I grew up loving movies and watching movies. Um, the independent stuff, one of the reasons that I was interested in doing The League originally was being able to get to know Mark and Katie. Um because of how much interesting stuff they had done and how how revolutionary you know Katie when when I got to when we started the league you know Katie had, had just directed the freebie Mark and and Jay were working on had shot Cyrus I think at that point I mean there was just a bunch of stuff and I was really fascinated by them and, and so it, it they have opened my eyes to that marketplace and I think the further I've gone along in my career but yeah I've always liked you know like I think you know like one of the movies that inspired this movie was You Can Count on Me the Mark Ruffalo Laura oh, yeah. Linney movie yeah. um which again is a different era of independent film but um but it's exciting and it, it's exciting that it's right now with the cost and te- technology what allows you to go make a movie and and then and then put it out and not be dependent on it like living in the movie theater that people can make their money and 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 everybody can and get it done is is pretty cool. So the film is Adult Beginners. It's on VOD, iTunes, etc. Already everywhere. Yeah. Uh, in terms of release dates theatrically, where is, is there a website people can check? Yes, yeah, so you go to adultbeginnersfilm.com okay. and you can see all the theaters that it's playing at, where it's screening, and where I'll be doing screenings, and then, uh, and also nickkroll.com. Okay. And do you have anything else you want people to keep their eyes on, or is there a Twitter or something that people should follow if they want to find out what you're up to? Yeah, they go to at Nick Kroll on Twitter or Instagram or f- in Facebook, basically. Nick Kroll across the board. Um, I'm, I'm pretty relent, not relentless. I'm very charming with how I promote things, <laughs> but I do let people know about what I'm doing coming up and things that, that are coming up next. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nick. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks with for having it's me. very enjoyable. Thank you. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the side style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.